when you're looking to buy a new SSD. Uh, some people like to focus on the pure performance of the drive, but a lot of people still make their decision based on the price alone. And this Corsair MP600GS is meant to appeal to that group. It is a new Gen 4 NVMe SSD that is supposed to be one of the cheaper SSDs on the market, while still offering a level of performance that you would expect from a Gen 4 drive. But keep in mind, the SSD market is extremely competitive and there are so many models around, which makes it very hard for any manufacturer to stand out. So let's see what Corsair managed to do here and if and when it makes sense to grab one of these. Let's begin. This video is brought to you by Seasonic and their Prime TX power supplies. These fully modular, high quality power supplies are extremely efficient. They are very quiet due to their new hybrid fan control that stops the fans completely under 40% load. They offer a variety of connections for any kind of systems you have in mind, and you even get the new 12 volt high power connection you need for the brand new RTX 4090 graphics cards from Nvidia. They range from 650 watts all the way up to 1600 watts for the biggest enthusiasts out there. And as a nice bonus, you get a cozy 12 year long warranty. Check them out using the links in the description below. The MP600DS comes in three capacities, 500 gigabytes, one terabyte, and two terabytes. Smaller capacities than that don't really make sense anymore, seeing how cheap SSDs have become, but I would like to see brands that add four terabyte models and then especially these affordable ones. Now the drive itself is pretty simple. It uses a mid-range Fison controller and some three bit TLC NAND memory, and that's it. It doesn't even have DRAM cache like you would find on higher end drives. All the memory is on one side, which is nice for cooling and for laptop compatibility. And Corsair puts a decent looking black sticker on top, which makes it easy on the eyes if your drive is visible in your system. There is no heatsink included and there is no heatsink option either, but I'll talk about that a bit later. Although the setup is simple, Corsair isn't really ignoring a lot of features like many other affordable SSDs do. You do get support for hardware encryption, for example, and they're also covering this drive with a five year long warranty, assuming you don't go over the total bytes written rating of 600 terabytes for one terabyte version or 1200 terabytes for the two terabyte version, which is basically impossible for a regular user. But let's jump straight into performance because even an affordable drive isn't really worth buying if it performs poorly. And as always, I'm going to begin with the PC Mark 10 quick benchmark, which is a collection of tests that replicate all those little light things we do with our PCs every single day. So things like uh, working with documents or looking at photos. And this is a very useful benchmark for anyone that wants to add a second SSD or an extra SSD to their system for these simple little tasks. The 870 EVO is generally considered the best SATA drive on the market, and this drive is a lot faster than that. But on the high end, we can already see that the MP600GS doesn't really compete with proper high-end drives like the Samsung 990 Pro, WD Black SN850X, and Corsair's own MP600 Pro LPX, for example, which just perform much better. That being said, this Corsair is supposed to compete with the affordable drives and compared to the WD uh, SN570 and the Samsung 980, as well as the Gen 4 competitor, the Crucial P3 Plus, all of these four drives perform about the same in this test. The full PC Mark 10 suite is a bit more intense and it is supposed to replicate a bit more constant and a bit more intense and serious use of your system and of your SSD. So this is a great benchmark for anyone that is looking for a new main drive or for anyone that needs to run applications that are just heavy on the SSD. And here, Corsair ended up just behind the Samsung 980 and the Crucial P3 Plus, but again, they're all pretty close to each other and they all even approach some slightly fancier drives like the Sabre and Rocket, for example. The MP600GS also pulled away from the SN570 with again, the best SATA alternatives being far behind. Looking at the latency result, you get about the same image. It's in the same line with the Samsung 980 and the P3 Plus from Crucial. The PCMark consistency test is not really relevant for most of you because it simulates an extreme workload that stresses the drive for multiple hours and basically to its limits. And this 
just doesn't happen in most regular use cases, especially affordable drives shouldn't be bought for these situations. And the Corsair does okay here with a result of 223 megabytes per second average. Now that is just ahead of the P3 Plus, while the 980 completely tanks in this test, but the SN570 holds up slightly better here. That being said, if you care about intense applications, you shouldn't be looking at these affordable drives, but at drives at the top of the list instead, like the 990 Pro or Corsair's MP600 LPX. But gaming is one of the main reasons to actually buy a large affordable SSD. And this uh, 3D Mark storage suite is a test that includes a lot of gaming related tasks. So things like uh, loading games, like installing games, recording games and saving games, as well as uh, moving game folders around. And here, the gap between the fastest and the slowest NVMe drive is actually pretty small. So the price will mostly be the deciding factor. Here we can see a similar ranking as before, the MP600GS with the same P3+, 980 and SN570 is near the bottom of the graph, but it is still a better alternative than SATA SSDs. Sequential read and write performance doesn't really represent a proper uh, real-life use as well as previous tests do, but it is worth checking if it meets the claimed speed. Now in sequential reads, the drive maxed out the Gen 4 connection on my motherboard with a result of almost 7,000 megabytes per second, which is similar to the P3 Plus and of course much higher than the Gen 3, 980 and SN570 drives. But what is interesting here is that that number is actually much higher than the 4800 megabytes per second that Corsair listed on their product page. Now, it is not unusual for a product to do a bit better than the spec suggests, but it is a bit strange to see it outperform it by about 40%. And this is also much more than Sony lists as their recommended spec for PlayStation 5 use. However, Sony also recommends you avoid drives without DRAM cache, meaning that you still shouldn't buy this for your PlayStation 5. Sequential write performance uh, generally isn't super important either, but there are exceptions like uh, the WD SN570, which performs so poorly when it has to write large amounts of data that it becomes a real downside. Now, the MP600GS doesn't have this problem, and I would say it performs adequately here. But one area where this SSD does really well is thermals. And without using any heat sinks or having any airflow above it, it doesn't throttle at all during light and medium workloads. And when I ran the full PC Mark suite again without any cooling, it gave the same results as before, and that's already a pretty intensive test. Now, it is possible to push the controller to about 80 degrees after about an hour and a half of non-stop stress, and you can get it to throttle that way, but I would not call that a realistic scenario. Still, I do think it is wise to use whatever heatsink your motherboard came with, or to add a third-party heatsink either way, because some cases can run hotter in general, and these third-party heatsinks cost very little. Now, I will leave some suggestions in the description of this video, but if you don't want to use one, it should still work completely fine without it. Since the SSD market is so competitive, the most important aspect is going to be the price. And if I look at the US, the one terabyte MP600 is selling for about $100. Uh, that is about $20 more than the 980, which Corsair generally just about beats. And that is $30 more than the SN570, which is slower, but it still feels like a big price gap for anyone that is looking for a value drive. It is also $10 more than the P3 Plus, which on average performed a tiny bit better, and it is too close to the crucial P5 Plus, which is consistently better. So for Corsair to make sense here, it really needs to match that $90 price tag of the P3 Plus, or ideally even go below that. Now, if you want two terabytes, it does look a little bit better with only the SN570 being considerably cheaper. Still, I would say the Corsair needs to get further away from that P5 Plus because $7 isn't nearly enough of a saving compared to the performance gap between these two drives. Now, in the EU, the one terabyte version looks fine, uh, being just cheaper than the 980 and the P3 Plus, though a few euros less would make it a pretty obvious choice but the two terabyte version is too expensive right now and it is really hard to justify paying more than the price of the P3 Plus. 
That being said, it is important to remember that Corsair just launched this drive and it is completely normal for an SSD to be a bit more expensive at launch and then go down in price over time. And most of the other drives that I mentioned today have been out for a while. So if Corsair manages to get the prices a little bit lower, this could turn out to be a great value option and it's definitely more sensible than any Gen 3 drive in my opinion. Now, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope it was helpful. If you liked it, please do consider subscribing to my channel so you never miss my uploads. Bye guys and see you in the next one.